So uh, today's class, uh, go for the first canto, third chapter, verse number 43, 1343. Omagyan timidandasya gina jana salakaya chaksun militam yena tasma shri gudavena maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pucharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Prasthyatya De Satarine Manchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Paye Pucha Patitano Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Well, this verse is uh, the glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam, and I'll explain why I chose this verse for today's class. Krishna Swadharma Bhagate Dharma Janadi Bihi Saha Kalo Nasta Drusame Sad Purna Narko Duno Titaha Purar Pura Narko Dudo Duno Titaha. This Bhagavat Puran is as bright, brilliant as the sun. It has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. <clears throat> Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. <clears throat> Lord Sri Krishna has his eternal dham or a boat. Uh, Varun, uh, Runda? Yes, Maharaj. Runda? Yes, Maharaj. Can you read? Can you read? That would be good. You... Yes, Maharaj. Start off with Lord Sri Krishna. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Lord Sri Krishna has his eternal dham or a boat where he eternally enjoys himself with his eternal associates and paraphernalia. And his eternal abode is a manifestation of his internal energy, whereas the material world is a manifestation of his external energy. When he descends to the material world, he displays himself with all paraphernalia, with his internal potency, which is called Atma Maya. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he descends by his own potency, Atma Maya. His form, name, fame, paraphernalia, abode, etc. are not therefore creations of matter. He descends to reclaim the fallen souls and to reestablish course of religion which are directly enacted by him. Except for God, no one can establish the principles of religion. Either he or a suitable person empowered by him can dictate the course of religion. Real religion means to know God, our relation with him, and our duties in relation with him, and to know ultimately our destination after leaving his material body. The conditioned soul, souls who are entrapped by the material energy hardly know all these principles of life. Most of them are like animals engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. They are mostly engaged in sense enjoyment under the pretension of religiosity, knowledge, or salvation. They are still more blind in the present age of quarrel or Kali Yuga. In the Kali Yuga, the population is just a royal edition of the animals. They have nothing to do with spiritual knowledge or godly religious life. They are so blind that they cannot see anything beyond the jurisdiction of the subtle mind, intelligence, or ego, 
but they are very much proud of their advancement in knowledge, science, and material prosperity. They can risk their lives to become a dog or hog just after leaving the present body, for they have completely lost sight of the ultimate aim of life. The personality of Godhead Sri Krishna appeared before us just as a little prior to the beginning of Kali Yuga, and he returned to his eternal home practically at the commencement of Kali Yuga. While he was present, he exhibited everything by his different activities. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita specifically and eradicated all pretentious principles of religiosity. And prior to his departure from his material world, he empowered Sri Vasudev through Narada to compile the messages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And thus, both the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam are like torch bearers for the blind people of this age. In other words, if men in this age of Kali want to see the real light of path, they must take to these two books only, and their aim of life will be fulfilled. Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary study of the Bhagavatam, and Srimad Bhagavatam is the summum bonum of life, Lord Sri Krishna personified. We must therefore accept Srimad Bhagavatam as the direct representation of Lord Krishna. One who can see Srimad Bhagavatam can see also Lord Sri Krishna in person. They are identical. Omagyan timidandasya ganajana salakaya chaksu militam yena tas my Sri Gurudevan Maha. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunyavadi, Pastyatya De Satarine, Panchakalpa through this Chakri Pasindu Bay, Pachapititanam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo, Namahona Maha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhakti Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. The Lord incarnates in different manifestations of himself and one of the manifestations of his incarnation is literary sound vibration or the written word in this case, it refers to that absolute principle of pure devotional service. And that in the form of, we call it Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad really means glorious, beautiful, exalted, auspicious. Bhagavatam in this case means the activities of Bhagavat or the person who is full in all six opulences all wealth, strength, beauty, knowledge, fame, and renunciation. Um, this Bhagavatam that we have been given by his divine grace with his illustrious realizations based on his uh, realization by based on his knowledge of Krishna are the torchlight, as it's mentioned here, in this dark age of Kali. Uh, we need something to guide us through this darkness of this age. We say this age is dark because the emphasis on this age is sense gratification and, and economic uh, progress. Well, not progress, but economic uh, activities to gain more material things and to enjoy the senses as much as possible. This is in summation that this age, and because it is contrary to the living entity's good, uh, good fortune or progress in life, it causes so much problems. And therefore, those problems cause darkness, and that darkness is what we find all pervading in this age of Kali. But when you have darkness, you need a light to eradicate the darkness or something that helps you see within the darkness. And in this case, knowledge. Now this knowledge is direct. 
it is the direct manifestation of the, the knowledge of the relationship between the living entity and the Supreme Personality of Godhead and all the information that is known or required, I want to say, all the information that is required to develop that relationship. So this is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is of a manifestation of Krishna in sound. As it says here in the translation, the Lord left Srimad Bhagavatam when he disappeared from, from this world. He left that as an, an incarnation of him himself. And to illustrate that, Srila Prabhupada makes many points, but he culminates his illustration by saying that Bhagavatam and Krishna are identical. That is a matter of understanding, not a matter of philosophical conjecture. And that comes by way, it, but it is true. The, the realization comes by way of our living according to that knowledge of Sri, that's given in Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the process of pure devotional service. So Bhagavatam is very auspicious. It's very much required in order to cut through this ignorance which surrounds us. That ignorance is compounded constantly by emphasizing the needs and the desires of the mind, body, and senses. So when Prabhupada uses words like animal civilization, dogs, um, royal edition of animals, blind, he's not just being critical, he's actually describing the present situation clearly. Because um, human beings are meant to do good for each other. An animal can only do harm to another. Animals don't think about doing good to other animals. So we see in this age, people are always causing difficulty to each other on different levels, on the social, political, economic, philosophical, aesthetic, even spiritual level. There are people who have, are selfish and blind to the, the, the goal of life and the relationship it has with other living entities. <clears throat> so Bhagavatam is that light within the darkness. So to read, to understand, to apply, to uh, realize, and then to develop, all of these things are what Bhagavatam is providing. We're reading this knowledge. We're trying to understand it. We're learning how to apply it. We're getting the realization that comes through proper application and the qualities, characteristics, and skills that we develop once, that, once it becomes realized in practice. Mm -hmm. So that's Srimad Bhagavatam. It teaches us who is Krishna and what is our relationship with Krishna, how to love Krishna in a very practical and a very systematic way. So um, it's very incumbent that devotees see the importance of regularly hearing and chanting the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. It should be a daily fall. Nasta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistiki. So nityam bhagavatam, one should regularly, or what we say always, be in contact with the transcendental message given by Srimad Bhagavatam. So it is mentioned that one should hear and also read here, read, which is the same, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam daily. It is not something we do when we have time. It is a, is a daily requirement in, in order for us to progress and also to stimulate our intelligence and the knowledge that comes from that stimulation so we can practice Krishna consciousness successfully. The Bhagavatam is so important. Now, um, I'll switch a little bit 
to a particular event that's coming up. It's, uh, it's called Bajra Purnima. Maybe some of you have heard it. Bajra Purnima comes up on the 20th of this month, which is in about six days. It is a Purnima, of course, but it is a special Purnima. And there is a special program going on within the ISKCON society. And that is that devotees are asked to buy one or more sets of Srimad Bhagavatam and gift that Bhagavatam or Bhagavatams to someone on that day of Bhadra Purnima. So the, the campaign started by one very exalted devotee in our movement, very advanced by Sheshika Prabhu. He's in, initiated this uh, program that devotees buy, go to the temples and buy a set of Srimad Bhagavatams and then find someone who you feel is worthy to receive it and give it as a gift. Now, what is the purpose of that? Of course, to give transcendental knowledge to others and do it as a service. But there is a benefit in the giver. And this is an interesting benefit. It says anyone who performs this activities on that day, the 20th of in, uh, September this year, Bhadra Purnima, is guaranteed to go back home, back to Godhead. And that is a clear and unequivocal statement. So anyone who is engaged in devotional service, on that day, you gift a friend, a relative, or someone, Bhagavatam, you will get the benefit, supreme benefit of going back to the spiritual world. So this is called Falastuti. Uh, this is the fruits of performing a particular spiritual activity. And Bhagavatam, being non-different than Krishna, is, is something that is uh, unsurpassable. One cannot think of a better gift to give someone than transcendental knowledge. As it says, when one has transcendental knowledge, they are free. They are without anxiety and they are without, what we say, difficulty, material difficulty. So we're encouraging the devotees to go to their local temples or inquire. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, there is a particular website that is... Uh, um, conducting this program, uh, you may look, do a little research. I don't have any information in front of me. The actual flyer that describes this is no longer in my possession. But it's on the 20th of this month, Bhadra Purnima, give a gift of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It'll cost you some money, but that money is an investment in your spiritual life. And it's a great way to serve another living entity. Okay, Radha Bhakti, thank you. www.bhadracampaign.com. So make a note of that, inquire into that, and find out how you can. So here at the Chicago Temple, on Sunday, we, uh, we were able to inspire nine different people to buy the Bhagavatam. And now they are ready to uh, make that a gift on the 20th of this month, Bhadra Purnima. So um, it's happening around the world. And this will inspire people to read. Because when we read Srimad Bhagavatam, we are directly in contact with Krishna. As it says here in the very end of the purport, there's no difference. In fact, if you do a little bit of an analysis, you'll find that uh, Krishna's transcendental body is synonymous with the different cantos in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's described that the first and 
second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam are the lotus feet of the Lord. The third and fourth canto are the calves, the thighs, fifth and sixth. As you go up the body of the Lord, you go to the higher and higher cantos. The tenth canto is the smiling face of the Lord. The eleventh is his forehead and the top of the head is his, is the twelfth canto. So we can see by this analogy, this analogy has been given to us by the Acharyas, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati in particular, to, to illustrate that Nam Bhagatam is non-different than Krishna's transcendental body. So, and of those who don't read Bhagavatam, here's an opportunity to even purchase a set for yourself and begin reading. Um, personally, I highly recommend devotees take the time to read Bhagavatam every day and um, go deeper into this wonderful treasure house of knowledge, which stimulates the mind uh, awakens happiness within the heart and inspires one in their devotion to Krishna. It's a wonderful, wonderful. Bhagavatam is the best. It can't, like the holy name, it cannot be fully described in its glory. Well, we have to accept that it is the best. Okay, so these are some little things we can think about. Of course, Bhagavatam has 18,000 verses and each of the verses are powerful sutras describing the process of pure devotional service. His divine grace, Srila Prabhupada has indicated that each of the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam takes at least one month to fully understand. And if you multiply that by 18,000, you get 1,500 years. So that is a lot to read and study. Um, okay, so here's a little bit of an indication of Bhagavatam. And uh, you can, those of you who are connoisseurs of transcendental knowledge, who look forward to reading transcendental knowledge, Bhagavatam has every topic that you need to know about. It has family, it has society, it has nationality, country, economic development, otherworldliness, transcendence, descriptions, geographical, philosophical, astronomical, also um, points on, uh, on, what's that science? Uh, uh, building buildings, everything. It's all the architecture, it's all there in Srimad Bhagavatam. So take advantage and get a set of Srimad Bhagavatams and then give it as a gift to somebody in this material world. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Maharaj. For explaining about this verse, it's a beautiful verse. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Tesh has a question. Yes, I think so. Tesh Prabhuji, okay. please go ahead. I jumped in a little bit earlier. Sorry about that. Maharaj, uh, please. Verse, but also the essence of Bhagavatam, because I uh, myself have been involved with the children. Uh, doing online presentation to distribute Bhagavatam for two years now. This is the second year. And um, I have a question, Maharaj, in respect to this verse, because we, when we present, either online or in person, especially during the Badra Purnima, we say that there is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam and we recite this verse. And we say that this is the most auspicious day to get Srimad Bhagavatam. 
but the word specifically says to a worthy person. Uh, so in the purpose, I'm, and, and I think other lectures, it also says to a Vaishnava. But in general, when we are distributing, we are distributing to people sometimes who are favorable, sometimes who people not have heard Bhagavatam, but they are inspired by it, or sometimes they're just inspired by preserving the Indian tradition and they, they, they sponsor a set or they get Srimad Bhagavatam. So are they considered worthy recipients as well, Maharaj, in, in respect to this verse? Oh, who are you referring to? Sorry, Maharaj? You're referring to? Uh, so, for example, if you're distributing to uh, a person who is uh, not a Vaishnava, who is not in devotional service, but somehow he, they get inspired to take Srimad Bhagavatam either on the premise of uh, preserving the Vedic culture or just doing something because it believes it's, you know, it, it's something good to do. So, are they considered worthy recipients in, in, in line with this verse? Because it says if you have to give Bhagavatam to a worthy person, because they might not be following bhakti, they might be doing all kinds of things, but they have somehow had the sukruti to take Srimad Bhagavatam home. Well, that's good enough. If they leave the Bhagavatam on the shelf, it's like having Krishna in their house. It's like having a deity. Yes. There's no difference. They'll benefit simply by that. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Maybe not those persons may not necessarily be the persons who advantage, take advantage of it. Sometimes a friend or a relative will be the one that benefits from it. Happens all the time. Yeah, I think it's a benefit to give it to such persons also. Okay, Maharaj. Because we always say this word to inspire them as well, to say, look, Padra Purnima is coming. It's the most auspicious day to, to invite Srimad Bhagavatam. Or if you want to do Shastra Dan, and then we kind of use these lines to encourage people. Yeah, Bhagavatam will do the work. Yes, Maharaj. And then we have some wonderful stories that probably we can share sometime later, but... There's some amazing stories that happen at the Bhaktivedanta Manor when we were distributing Bhagavatam. Yeah, the stories are another, another uh, Bhagavatam in itself. Yes, so that was my question, Maharaj. Thank you. And uh, we are still short of our goal. We are trying our hard, uh, so please uh, bless us that we can we can do 400 sets for UK uh, the, or the manner goal to please Srila Prabhupada. How many have you done so far? We are about 130 short. Uh, oh, that's good. Goals. That means 270, huh? Okay. As a, keep, it as go a, keep it going, yeah. And when you're when you push when you're trying to encourage others, just tell them, just show them the list of people who already bought it. <laughs> tell them is join this auspicious asanga here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. It's a wonderful service. You can't can't go wrong. Thank you, Maharaj. If anyone else has any question, comments, or questions, please go ahead. I don't see any raised hand or question, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Who is the host for tomorrow's show? Do you know? Tomorrow it will be Srimati Mataji. Oh, okay. 
I think I mentioned it to her when I was here, but tomorrow I'm I'm in yes. transit tomorrow during that time. So yes, uh, she mentioned that we will have to look for another speaker for tomorrow. Yeah, just for tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, read the creed. Get up to speed. That's the need. Take the lead and you'll be happy indeed. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sukava, I was just thinking of you this morning. Oh, that's so nice, Guru Maharaj. I was thinking about you as well. I was, thinking... I was just chanting and just thinking about you. I don't... Somehow I was chanting for you, actually. I don't know why, but... No wonder I had such a good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Nice to hear you. You're, you're happy? I am, Guru Maharaj. Good, Thank, good, you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. We'll see you all again soon. Maybe another visit to the UK. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, maybe when, yeah, I'm not sure when, but it's it's in the idea form. Oh, great. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hari. Hari Hari Paul. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Is, is that uh, Raja Vilasini? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for... Thank you very much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Waha, we were chanting your name yesterday as we were giving yes. your name. I saw the initiation yesterday. It was very nice. Yeah. Good. You saw it, huh? Yeah. Good, 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 yeah. Yes, Maharaj, yesterday was very nice. All got beautiful names. Yeah, I like the names very much. <laughs> yes, names are very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see you all on Thursday and have a nice class tomorrow. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association to us. Hey. Go Ranga, go Ranga. Go Ranga, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you.